Hey guys, today we are going to jump right in because we have so much to talk about. Um, today we are going to be talking about travel therapy. So if you are um, a therapist or maybe even a nurse and you want to learn about travel and how you can travel as a professional, keep watching. Um, we're going to go ahead and jump in. I have made a list of things to talk about on my phone to make sure I don't miss anything. So let's get started. So just a little bit about me before we get started. Um, my name is Jill. I am a SLP and I have been um, an SLP for three years and I have been traveling for two years. Um, so that's just a little bit about me. So if you have been wondering um, what is travel therapy, um, like if you're brand new, don't really know much about it, you're in the right place because I'm going to help answer some of the questions that I had. Um, when I first started and maybe help you get you in the right direction So first if you're wondering like what exactly is a traveling um, therapist Okay, so um, I'm going to primarily talk about the three therapies um, speech therapy physical therapy and occupational therapy um, as a traveling therapist basically what happens is there is a need around the country for um, speech physical and occupational therapists and there's just not enough of us and so all these places around the country they still need to have um, these services they still have people who need um, who need speech therapy or physical therapy or whatever um, I mean they still need them even if they don't have a person to fulfill it so what they do is they reach out to all these companies and say hey we have a need we're willing to have a traveler um, you know come in and do the job and so basically that's what we do we go around the country finding where there's really a need and where they have a, a place for us and we fill the job now most contracts are 13 weeks um, you'll see that that's pretty much what they are is 13 weeks but you can find some that are shorter and you can find some that are longer I personally enjoy doing school assignments because I have found that I love having you know nine ten months to really get in and enjoy a place but some people think there's no way that's way too long I don't want that um, I have taken an assignment as short as eight weeks um, you know there was a place in Alaska they you know were waiting for their new therapist to come in so they needed someone for eight weeks to fill the gap so that's what I did I think I've even seen assignments as short as four weeks um, so they are out there but just for the general um, amount of time you're gonna see uh, contracts um, it's usually 13 weeks but sometimes places are willing to work with you say that you want to you can only stay for 10 weeks because you have a vacation or you have something planned sometimes you can ask them and they'll say sure we need somebody we'll get you for 10 weeks even if you can't stay the full 13 but um, anyways that's all stuff that you can work with your recruiter on um, but typically you're gonna see 13 week assignments or school assignments um, in order to start traveling um, there's some things that you need to know um, so one of the perks of being a traveling therapist is the pay um, but there's some things that you need to know with the pay in order to qualify for tax-free money through traveling you need to have what is called a tax home now I'm not a tax professional um, by no means please <laughs> consult um, your tax guy or your tax girl when it comes to this but the general consensus pretty much is that in order to get tax-free money you need to have a tax home and a tax home is basically your hometown so when you travel you're not abandoning your home um, really what it is is you still live so for instance with me I'm from Georgia I still live in Georgia when I'm done traveling I plan to come home to Georgia at Christmas I come to Georgia um, at Thanksgiving I come home to Georgia so I still have a home where I'm paying rent so I still live in Georgia where I pay rent um, and this is where I will come back and live when I'm done traveling um, unless we find somewhere else we want to live but anyways you get the point now the government gives us tax-free money because they're saying oh you live in Georgia but you're traveling to say California for work so now you're paying rent in two places and because you're paying rent in two places that's why they give you the tax-free like the meal stipends and housing stipends 
and that's what makes our income um, for traveling so worth it is because you know we are paying rent in two places so just know that um, you can't just say I'm gonna sell my house and go travel um, and make all this tax-free money like it doesn't work like that you still have to have your home um, where you are paying rent um, at a fair market value anyways that's kind of my take on it but again I'm not a travel I'm not excuse me I'm not a tax professional so um, talk to your tax people um, and they'll kind of explain it probably a lot better than I did but that's just the gist of it you have to have a tax home where you are paying rent um, you know that is separate from when you try where you travel to um, let's see what else sorry guys I'm looking down at my phone I really made a list because I've had so many questions um, and I just want to make sure that I kind of cover it so you decided you want to travel you kind of get you know what tra a traveler is um, remember you need to have a tax home in order to travel um, so then you might wonder okay so how do I get started like say okay I have a place where I can maintain a tax home uh, but now now what now what do I do um, so now what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to find um, a recruiter um, or two or three often many travelers work with multiple you're gonna want to find a recruiter who can help you find the jobs now let's let's pause here what I wish I had known when I started traveling was um, okay so I what I did when I started traveling I knew of all these companies and I went to their website and I filled out their little I'm interested in a job generic thing well now 10 companies have my phone number my email address and even though like I've ghosted them they do not stop contacting me so do not do that please don't do that do not go onto their random websites and just give them all your information <laughs> because they will not leave you alone don't do that um, what I suggest is talk to another traveler who has re a recruiter or for instance I've had three recruiters now I'm not telling you to go use all my recruiters I love them they're great I'll recommend them if you ask but that's not what I'm saying I'm saying find another traveler who has had experience um, and that, to, that you can talk to them and I really recommend just using someone who you know has a good um, reputation among other travelers one way you can do that um, is through the Facebook page it's the travel travel therapy therapist I think that's it on Facebook it has a ton of travelers in it and before you go and just like ask your question go to the search bar and type in uh, recruiters and you will see so many questions and so many posts of other people who have said hey who's a re good recruiter with this company or this company or just you know what you can use that search bar to search different companies um, and you can learn so much information and get such great recommendations how now one thing to be aware of is you know I, I don't want to think that a lot of people do this but it is possible a lot of times people do get a referral bonus for referring you so if I referred you to this company and you take a job and complete a job with them I would get a referral bonus now some of these recruiters that you get referred to really are great like a lot of I would like to say most people who are referring you to a recruiter really love their recruiter but just be aware that that's how it works so you know don't I mean unless you just know the person personally just have having some understanding of how it works and that you know somebody could just be telling you they're a recruiter because they get some money I mean I really hope that's not the case but it could be but there's lots of companies out there lots of recruiters that you know a lot are great some are not um, but you know that's what it is so get your recruiter um, once you have found maybe two or three good recruiters now you're only gonna work with one at a time but I like to have two or three that I'm talking to because they all have jobs in different areas now they may have a lot of the same jobs but I like to see you know have a wide range of places that I can go so I like to work with lots of recruiters um, so that I have a better chance of getting to go where I want um, so now once you have a lot of recruiters start telling them oh, excuse me once you have two or three recruiters because um, if you have more than that it can just be like hectic and crazy and just too much so once you have your recruiters tell them where you want to go um, so like if you have a specific state you want to go say I want to go to California um, and these are the populations I prefer to work with um, and then they will do their magic and they will send you um, 
they will send you their jobs that they have um, and which is really great because then you can go through um, you know determine where you want to go and see like what works best for you okay so say you have a recruiter and they found your dream job um, and they you know say here's the pay package um, and here's all the information now that's important because you want a recruiter who is going to tell you all the information up front and tell you the pay package up front. Now I won't get into recruiter red flags in this video because I mean it's probably already going to be really long as it is. Um, but let me just say one thing. If a recruiter, if you start talking to a recruiter and one of the first things they ask is what kind of money um, are you expecting? Nope. No, run, run away. Um, this may not be bad. I don't know. I don't like it. And so if a recruiter says that to me, I'm already going to have my red flag up and say, I feel, you know, to me it feels like, oh, you're hoping I say a low number so you can give me that low number and they can take more money. But yeah, that's just me. You know what? You do you. But if a recruiter says that to me, I run. But anyways, when they have a job, they should give you the pay um, and then all the good information about it. Now let me make sure I'm not skipping anything. Um, okay, now let's talk a little bit about the pay package um, now that we're kind of to that point. Let me help you explain how the pay works um, because a lot of different companies may come to you and say, oh, we can offer this, 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 and this. Um, and this company says, well, we can offer you this and this, but it's hard to compare um, because you really don't understand the pay package so let me explain it say that I go to work for a school I want to um, in California let's say California is going to pay my company $75 an hour um, for me to work for them that is called the bill rate that's how much the um, that's how much the company or the school district or the facility is paying my company per hour for me to work there now, from that bill rate, from that $75, they're going to pay me some. Some of that's going to go towards paying me. And then the company is going to um, keep the rest because obviously they have to pay themselves um, to, to keep working. Now, you want to find a company who's honest and is going to give you as much money as they can. Um, now, obviously, we know they keep some for themselves because that's just how it works. But you want to find a recruiter who's going to get you the most that they can um, and not a recruiter who's just in it to try to keep all the money for themselves. Now when I was talking about earlier how recruiters might say, what are you expecting to get? See I, that bothers me because I'm thinking, oh if I say this amount of money but really you have this amount of money to give me, now I've just set myself up, myself up for failure because you know I'll take this and you're not going to give me this amount instead. Um, instead you're going to keep the difference for yourself. Does that, I don't know if that makes sense, but um, that's just one thing that I don't like. Um, I just tell recruiters, you know, in that situation I say, um, get me as much as possible. Or I'll tell them um, if I just had, I mean sometimes I just say a ridiculous number just to like make them stop asking silly questions like that. Like that's, I don't like that question. Just get me as much as you can. Um, anyways, I'm getting off on a tangent. So that's kind of how the pay works. Um, there is a rate that um, they get. Um, they give to the company per hour for us. And then from that bill rate, that's how they pay us. Now, some companies will say, you know what? Ooh, come work for us because we'll give you um, like a thousand dollar sign on bonus or we'll give you five hundred dollars to travel to your next assignment and they'll give you all these things that sound so cool because you'll be like "Ooh, company A is gonna give me this this and this but company B they're not gonna give me five hundred dollars to travel and this you know all these extra things beware of that because all that money this comp the companies aren't just saying, oh, let's give them all this extra money to get them to work from us. No, that's all going to come from your bill rate. Um, any additional perks that a company says they're going to give you, it's all coming from your money anyway. Personally, what I like to do is I say, you know what, don't give me, don't give me all the extras. I don't want the, um, 
I don't want money for supplies unless you really need it. You know, that's different. But I'm like, don't give me all the perks. Put it all back into my pay package. I want the most money take home per week. Now, that's not to say that it's bad to take, you know, a travel, um, travel money or to get your license reimbursed. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, sometimes I, I do that. I really do. But just be aware that it is all, at the end of the day, coming from your pay package. Um, it's all your money to begin with. They're just kind of putting it in different areas and making it look a different way. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're comparing pay with different companies and um, things like that. So sometimes if you don't take the upfront, like the travel reimbursements or the license reimbursements, things like that, sometimes that can go back into your pay package and give you more per week. Um, but it, it all depends on what you like to do. Just understand how it works so that you can make an informed decision. Okay? Um, let's see what's next. I, I literally put on my list, pay package. It all comes from the same pot. It does. It all comes from the same pot. Um, they're not just being kind and giving you $1,000 out of the company's, like, bank. I don't, I don't know. Whatever. Okay, so now, um, once you have a pay package, um, you can try to negotiate. Um, this sometimes is, you know, really good to do. See if you can get some more money. Um, sometimes, or what I do is I'll negotiate um, the money, and then sometimes I'll put in there and say, you know what, I'm going to need a week off on these dates. Um, if they can put that into my um, contract, um, my most recent one, I asked for like one like a sick day because I was used to California where you it's law that you have to get sick days so I asked for a couple sick days at my next assignment which isn't in California so just make sure to negotiate with your um, recruiter make sure you can get the most money that you can um, and make sure you have a contract that really is going to work for you so then next you're going to submit to the job if you love the job the pay package looks good the area looks good um, you're going to submit to the job. Now, don't be surprised when after you submit to the job, you um, have an interview that day or maybe even the next day. I'm telling you, travel therapy moves quick. Um, the reason they're going through travel companies is because they have a need and they need someone like pronto. Um, so you might interview the day of and you might, you might get a job offer the day of. Um, so it moves quick, so just make sure that when you're um, submitting for a job that you know the start date um, and you're ready to actually start on that start date. You know, sometimes people will be um, flexible if you can't come for like a week after or um, a few days after. Like Places are flexible, but just make sure you get all that in your contract um, so that you're covered. Okay. Um, once you have interviewed... Um, and they offer you the job, it's time to start packing because you are going to um, to your new location and you are going to love it. Okay. Okay. So a lot of you have had some specific questions um, for me, which are really great. I love getting your feedback because um, although I've only been traveling for about two, two and a half years, um, sometimes I forget about those questions I had when I started traveling. Um, so it's really great to hear from you guys. Um, I have one question that said, are there any advantage, uh, excuse me, are there any disadvantages or drawbacks to traveling from place to place? Um, I'll start with that one. And I mean, sure, there are some drawbacks. Um, I'm going to be honest, I can't think of many, <laughs> but sure, there are some. So if you only take a 13 week assignment or a shorter assignment, you know, it kind of stinks having to pack up your stuff every 13 weeks. That's personally why I like to do longer assignments is because I like to really settle in. Um, so that is a disadvantage, having to pack up your stuff um, every 13 weeks. Now, granted, you try to get furnished places so that, I mean, you really only should probably pack what you can fit into your car. So it's not that much packing, but it is still a hassle um, to pack up and move every 13 weeks. So that I would say that's a disadvantage or um, a drawback, really. It's not a disadvantage. I would just say a drawback or a, or a, it's not even that. It's really just like, oh, bummer, time to pack up. But then it's like, oh, cool, I'm about to go travel somewhere else. So load up the car, let's go. Um, another drawback is, you know, just being away from family. That's, that's difficult. Um, that's especially difficult for me sometimes. I love my family. But traveling is so great that it makes that a little bit easier. 
and it's kind of a pro too though because when you see your family it's like you really spend quality time with them um, as well as you now live in a super cool place and so everybody wants to come visit you so you really get to spend time with them so I think you know it may seem like a drawback being away from family but it actually is kind of a pro as well um, and a pro for your family because they have a free place to come stay in this new cool place um, so all these dis I mean disadvantages are really not that big of disadvantages they're just you know things that might be a little tough or a little frustrating um, but other than that I will say the biggest um, drawback to travel um, I feel is having to find housing now sometimes you'll find housing super super easily but other times like you really have to dig and talk to people and find a good place to live that can be a drawback um, just because it can be a little stressful like you're going to a place you've never been to before and now you have to find a place to live and oh and you start work in like three days or whatever like so that's kind of a drawback but again it's not a big deal and once you start doing it you'll get the hang of it you'll be good um i also have a question that says is it possible to practice in different different countries yes it is um, i actually had an offer to go work in italy on a military base which was really cool now granted it's not quite the same um and you know there are other jobs so like there's also jobs in new zealand oh, swoon Oh, amazing. That would be so great. Um, and then um, there really are Australia. Um, I think I've seen some in Japan, but it's different. So you won't get the travel stipends. You won't get the housing and meal stipends. It'll just be, you just go live over there and you work. Um, I'm not entirely sure how that works because I personally haven't looked into it. Um, well, obviously I have because I had a job offer, but <laughs> I haven't pursued it because I have a dog and it would be hard to travel overseas with my dog. Um, but there are, yes, there are jobs out there um, to travel to different countries. So check into that. Um, that would be really cool. Um, and then I have another question. What are the pros and cons? You know, we talked a little bit about the cons, um, which, I mean, they're kind of cons, but they're really not bad. Pros are um, the money is really nice. Um, we have been able to um, save and invest so much more than if we stayed home um, and worked locally. I mean, it has just been amazing. Um, another pro is you, again, you get to travel and work whenever and wherever you want. Um, a lot of times we take um, time off in between assignments to travel. Um, so it's not just traveling for work. I mean, literally take time off after an assignment and go travel some more. Um, and then decide to, you know, go back to work whenever you want. Um, so that's definitely a pro. Another pro is seeing new places, learning new cultures. Um, I never thought for once in my life that I would ever live in Alaska or California. Um, to me, that was just like never a thing that I thought I could actually do and I have done it. Um, and it's so amazing. Um, and it honestly has just like changed our life and so now I'm like oh originally I was only going to travel for a year um, and now I'm going on year three and I really don't know how I'm ever gonna stop traveling um, I may not I'm like is it possible to like raise a family in an RV like I don't know I'm just like trying to figure out because it's that great um, so that's just a little bit about travel therapy. Now, if you want to hear more about the, some of the specific things I talked about, like I can really go into depth about finding a recruiter or interviewing or I mean, whatever it is, let me know in the comments um, or shoot me a message on um, TikTok or Instagram um, or wherever. Let me know your questions and I'll be happy to make more videos because I mean, honestly, I know it's scary starting out travel. Um, I mean, me and my husband, we both quit our jobs and just <laughs> took off to California and my family probably thought I was crazy. Um, and it, you know, it seems a little too good to be true. Um, and <laughs> I mean, it really is as great as it sounds. Um, so if you're able to travel, go do it. Um, and you know, even if you are married, you can still travel. I mean, I'm married. My husband isn't a therapist and we make it work. Um, if you have children, there are many who still travel and take their children. Um, there's some who travel and don't take their husbands. I mean, I don't know, whatever works for you. Like you can make it work. It's really great. You can travel with pets. I travel with ladies. She comes everywhere with us. 
Um, so yeah, if you have a dream to do travel therapy, I say go for it. Um, I mean, and I'm, ha I'm here to answer any question or to help you um, to answer any questions, just give you some support. Um, and I'm happy to share any more information that you guys would like to hear. So um, find me on TikTok, uh, Instagram, YouTube. You can find me on Facebook too. Um, I don't really post a ton on Facebook, but the other three, TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, that's where you can find me the most. Um, and it's been great talking to you guys, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!